All right, count in. So three, two, one. Nick Zito, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for making time for us. I know you have a horse actually racing, so I'm particularly glad that you're here with us. Um, the horse is right here, actually. Right, yeah. And it, what's its name again? Jackson Ben. And are you concerned about the weather? Well, <clears throat> like everything else, Liz, you know, obviously it's a, it could be a problem, but so far so good, Knockwood. I think the humidity is uh, cooperating. There's a little breeze. Yeah. So, you know, the, like I was telling someone today, this particular horse, he has raced in Florida most of his career. And then he, we, he came to us last year. So he's, he's getting acclimated. He is acclimated to the heat. So hopefully, but it is a concern. Yeah, it's actually, I mean, today is obviously opening day. Right. So it would be unfortunate to scratch a race or scratch a horse on opening day, which has significance. But also Saratoga yeah. has unusual significance right. and must have a soft spot in your heart. You've been coming here for four decades. Oh, no question. What uh, makes it different to you? Well, I think if you just look at it, you know, just look at the place. There's something about it. And um, it, it's probably one of the last remaining treasures we have in racing. And uh, it, it's just kept its aura about it. You know, even in the bad times, it's always kept its aura. Uh, you say Saratoga, everybody lights up. You say other racetracks, you know, they go, and there's some great racetracks around America, but yeah. for some reason it's historical. You know, there's a lot of romance, there's a lot of pageantry, there's a lot of history, and there's a lot of great horses. And there's, there's great owners, there's great jockeys, there's great trainers. You know, You've whatever. actually, though, been, I mean, obviously, Naira's had troubles, financial mm -hmm. troubles that continue. They're having a bit of a tiff with the administration at the moment, to say the least. Right. You've been outspoken in the past when it looked last year that they had a, a little bit of a, a power struggle, if you will. There was questions as to whether or not Saratoga would even go on. It did. Yeah. Do you think that writ large Albany cares about the racing industry? You know, I, I hope so. I mean, it, it looks to me this governor, you know, he takes a, an interest in everything, you know, and, and one thing about it, you know, racing is so important. You know, I, I know everybody in the world talks about jobs. So this is one place that creates jobs and more importantly keeps jobs and keeps people working. So I think, uh, you know, from my point of view, he should definitely take a look at it and, uh, and keep it strong, you know, and it's a, it's a beautiful sport. I mean, look, like everything else, they, there's, there's downs, there's ups, there's highs, there's lows, there's, there's a million things to, to, to nitpick. But when you think about racing at its best, it's not much better. Yeah, but it actually also is sort of synonymous now with gambling. Even though yeah. racing has a historical value, right, it's right. been going on for a long time, now it's all about in VLTs and yeah. co-locating yeah. and making money, et cetera. And then you have people who say, well, gambling, period, is the state should get out of the business of it, period, altogether. Yeah. Well, we know one thing, Les. The state is never going to get out of gambling, period, because it generates money. Now, you know, gambling is, gambling is gambling. But horse racing, you know, yes, they gamble, they bet on horses, etc. But there's a lot of pageantry with that. You know, there's a lot of historic things with that. You know, there are a lot of what they call $2 bettors. There are a lot of fans that don't even bet. So. You know, it's a, it's a hard thing to juggle. I know what you, exactly what you're saying, but you can't, racing to me will, should survive and, and I think will always survive. In a, so in a perfect world, if you could see whatever you wanted out yeah. of Albany, what kind of, what would you see? You would, what kind of legislation would you see? Obviously financial support, I mean, yes. I got that part, yeah. but what would you want to see to support Saratoga? I would want to see a fair, you know, a fair act, a fair ba a balancing minutes. act, uh, basically uh, the governor, Everything he talks about is fair, and balanced, and just come back here and take a look at what goes on. You know, just have his people come back, and I'm sure he'll support it 100%. Well, what does that mean to you, though? I mean, obviously, improvements at the track. Is Improvement something. at the tracks, and more importantly, you know, Liz, I, I think anything that you have that's precious, you have to preserve it. You know, we only go around like they say once. We don't live here forever. That's what they say. So <laughs> why should we just, you know, have something that's such? an incredible place that everybody loves. Just always something, you know, or this or that. We may, you know, uh, we, we're gonna close maybe. They may not open or we're gonna shut you down. You right. read this in the paper, you know. If you don't bring our books, if you don't bring this, you don't bring, that's all, look, that's probably government business. That's probably all true. But when you take the whole thing, who's gonna shut this down? How is the governor gonna come here someday and just say, okay, I'm shutting it down? I doubt it, you know what I'm trying to say? And I don't think he's that kind of guy. So I'm just saying that 
in a perfect world for me, just keep this thing precious as it is. Just keep, just, just keep taking care of it and better and take care of it better. The changes that have been made to make it more blue collar or family friendly right. and, and a little, take it a little bit out of this idea about the big hats, which I love, I mean, don't get me wrong. Do you approve of all that to make it more affordable for people and more accessible? Absolutely. I mean, we, we make, I mean, I, I know where I came from. So for me, I mean, everybody deserves a, a chance to have something nice to see, to visit, to come and see and to come and to have a great time. So absolutely, there's no question. Because there are things that people don't get to see, like this, for example, obviously, they don't right. get to see the back, the back end right. of racing. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of controversy over the years about the way that people are treated, the people, who, the track workers who are here, obviously, right. the kind of housing that they have. Yeah. I mean, these are the kind of things that most people don't get to see. Well, Liz, that's why, you know, all these things that you're, you're bringing out are true. And I just think, look, as a whole, you know, uh, I would have to guess Saratoga is a lady. Let's say the Saratoga race course itself is is, is queen. You know, like uh, I like to think my owner Mary Lou Whitney is a queen, but I think you know Saratoga race course is a queen too. So for me, you know, respect the queen mm. and and all its all her subjects. So for me, you know, if the, if we could do that, we'd be great. And if, obviously, the central to the whole business is the horses. You've right. been really active at the federal level um, regarding horses and the slaughter of horses Absolutely. after racing. Yeah. This bill comes back again and yeah, again know. and I again. Know. What is the holdup? I don't know. You know, John Hedinger was uh, one of my mentors. He passed away. And my wife, Kim, the, the, the two of them basically gave me an awareness many, many years ago about horse slaughter. I don't really know. I, I guess you would know more than that when you study it because it's politics. I can't tell it. you what makes Washington do what it does. Yeah. I mean, look at what's happening with the debt ceiling. I yeah. can't really expect it. So I guess it's you. just that. But I hope eventually they get it straight. Because And the other thing, too, is every owner has an obligation with their horse. Every owner. Do you, you think know. they should be paying then after the horse, well, after well, stud Liz, fees, well, Liz, after racing? When you buy a horse, you have responsibility. You know, one of my good friends told me the other day, he said, they didn't ask to be born. So in, 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 in respect, in other words, if you own a horse, you should see what happens to that horse the remaining of his career. If you buy him, mm -hmm. it's your responsibility. I mean, that's my opinion. So what does that mean, though? Like in perpetuity, you support a horse into old age. How long do they live? Liz, what I'm saying is, <laughs> don't we don't want them to go to, we're true, but we don't want them to go to slaughter, put it that way. Because that's what the issue is, right? Yeah, we don't Going want them to, slaughter, to go, look, shipped overseas. look, let's say a horse has to be put down humanely, right? That's fine. In other words, if a horse gets hurt, you gotta be put down, or et cetera, et cetera. But if you have a horse, and you just leave him alone, or abandon him, and don't worry about where he goes, and all of a sudden, you read that uh, he's going, you know, for $500 to the killers, and then he had a wreck it, second to none, and he ran here at Saratoga one year, or he ran at Churchill Downs, or he ran at Gulfstream, or he ran somewhere. I mean, that's not right, you know what I'm saying? That's not right. Mm. I mean, look what we do for our sports heroes sometimes. You, you read what they're doing in the NFL with these older players. I mean, these poor guys, you know, you, you say, what happened to right. them? Right, same. Although, obviously, yeah. it's a horse. It's a horse. <laughs> okay, Liz. I am not a horse owner. Okay. But, you know, uh, they are beautiful creatures. You'd be a will, good horse owner. You'd be, be great. We will be rooting for you, and, and we'll let viewers know how it goes. Thanks, I want to thank Liz. you very much for spending time with us. Good uh, luck. It's a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you. And thanks for being such a good friend to Capitol tonight. Oh, it's my pleasure. I love it. I love it.